Hello there, Capricorn, and welcome to your monthly reading. This is for the month of November. We're nearly at the end of the year, and it's an exciting time no matter what. This month, as you know, we're going through a retrograde period, and I want to highlight a couple of things that are definitely uh, so somewhat problematic during that period, but also some things that are amazingly beneficial. Let's talk about the stuff that you have to be mindful of. So communication is the key thing that is affected. Mercury rules communication during this time period. It appears to be traveling in the opposite direction than it normally does. It's actually an illusion, but that is symbolic of a lot of the um, miscommunication or misperception that can happen during this period of time. So anything regarding written, spoken, or even communication that you receive and you're trying to interpret, it's that interpretation that is most at risk during this period. So slow down. Give yourself and give others time to uh, really compute what you've said and allow for questions or uh, if you have to deliver something and there's not going to be feedback, make sure that multiple people have a chance to look at it to really ensure that the tone, the context and the meaning gets through in your communication. Technology also is more prone to sort of break down or fail during this period of time. And um, any sort of travel also experiences delay during this period. And basically anything that you're trying to do, you just want to have a little bit of a buffer. All of that being said, there are some wonderful blessings during this period of time. The one that I think everyone here will appreciate the most is that intuition tends to be extremely heightened and it has a lot of different ways that it could play out. For me, I have really intense dreams. Some of you that are naturally clairvoyant may just receive uh, a very clear message when you are meeting people, doing things, or just going about your day. Uh, and if you're empathic, you might be feeling a lot more than usual. If there's something in your life that you need to pay attention to and you've, you have a tendency to avoid it, or maybe you just haven't been putting the focus on it that you should, it's going to come through. Uh, I use this analogy in another sign, and I think it's kind of funny. It's like the, the scene in Moonstruck where Cher kind of says, snap out of it. That's what this period of time is about. If there's anything that you have to do, the universe is kind of giving you a subtle shake and saying, this is the time period to do it. So um, for me, it, again, as a fellow intuitive, what happens is I can kind of sniff out things that are uh, right or wrong. And sometimes I will just see the truth. And it can be a little disconcerting sometimes, right? Because you, you know if someone's trying to hide something, you also can kind of see things in your own life that you could do better at. So that part of it is difficult, but the blessing of this period of time is that you're supposed to resolve things, old karma, um, old habits, and the reason things are coming through again is so that you can let go. And in this period, sometimes relationships fall apart. Uh, sometimes though, you get a second chance too. So if there is something in your life that you've always struggled with, try it again and try it with an open heart and an open mind during this period because revision type work, revisiting of anything, or uh, again, sort of that second go around, it's going to be more successful typically during this period. So uh, retrograde is a time to reveal, to resolve, to review. If you stick to that rule of thumb, I think you're going to be okay. And hopefully this gave you a little bit of a toolkit uh, so that you can best utilize all of the things coming through this month. As we get into the forecast here in a few minutes, I'm gonna try to find areas that you want to embrace and avoid during this period, especially looking at it through the lens of being in a retrograde. Speaking of the forecast, before I get into that, I'd like to give you a quick introduction first. Uh, for, first of all, for anybody that is already a returning viewer and you've, you've watched me for a while, I just want to welcome you back. Thank you so much. And thank everybody here also for being patient. I'm a little under the weather, but I'm trying to push through these readings to give you what you need. So thank you. Um, if you're brand new, I'd like to give you a proper introduction. My name is Nicholas Ashball. And the way that I organize these readings each and every month is as follows. Um, I always like to begin with some channeled information. We're going to talk about that in a second. That's when I connect with my guides and I'll share with you whatever I'm seeing, hearing, or feeling. And uh, it's probably my favorite part. So we'll begin again into that in just a second. Um, after I do the channeled message, then I'm going to use a deck of cards that I've chosen for your sign, pull a full Celtic cross, and that's going to reveal anything that is really, really important, an opportunity, some of the potential blocks, and also all the other little things in the month that I know everyone cares about. I 
make sure that I cover some very distinct areas in the expanded forecast, uh, which includes health, wealth, love, and destiny. So as you can see, this is a really nice comprehensive overview. You can use it, by the way, for your sun rising and moon sign. You can watch on behalf of someone that you love. If you don't happen to know, by the way, your sun rising or moon, then just stick with the sign that you were born under and you'll get everything that you need by doing that. I hope you enjoy what you see here. And if you do, stick around until the end. I'll give an overview of everything we talked about, a closing word, and I also go into uh, ways that you can support the channel if you like what you see. That includes everything from, of course, liking and subscribing, joining me on social media, booking an appointment if you're interested, and also becoming a patron. Again, more information at the end about how this helps, why it's important, etc. But I know you're here for the forecast, so let's talk about that right now. As I said, I always like to begin with channeled information and messages, and the way that I do that is I select a deck of cards, I meditate, and then whatever comes through in that meditation will be your channeled information. The first thing that I felt was this sort of sense of peace and tranquility, almost as if someone was sort of rocking me to sleep. And then I felt this sort of um, warm embrace, kind of like um, an angel's wings kind of going around me or mother's uh, arms kind of uh, embracing you. And the message that was whispered to me was to rest and replenish. I then looked at, in my mind's eye and I was shown the Four of Swords card, which really does embrace all of that. But I also felt a little bit of tension around allowing that to happen. So for many of you, it's not just sort of like sleeping, that's an easy thing to do, but releasing means like letting go of something that doesn't suit you, letting go of trying to control something. And if you are trying to meditate or increase your intuition, it's sort of like a surrender to during that period. And uh, I may add that to this card, but what I was writing initially was, rest and replenish. Uh, but I think that the underlying one, uh, the underlying message to that is that there's also a little bit of an element of surrender. And with that, any of you that have already kind of discovered this in your intuition, so at a certain point, you just kind of surrender to the universal flow and more comes through you. So uh, if you can't slow down a little bit, it's going to be hard for the, rece the receipt of any sort of abundance, messages or guidance to come through okay i hope that makes sense we're going to look at the cards and see what additional insights are going to come through at this point by the way i like to remain quiet but afterwards i will pull the camera up and we'll talk about everything that uh, is in front of us okay so stick around and i'm going to pull all of the cards right now In your Catalyst card, we have Divinity, and the Catalyst, by the way, touches everything that we see here today. It's a connective thread, and it's also the way to connect to the highest power. It's appropriate that in this particular spread, you have Divinity here. I see a violet flame energy that's running through this card. It's also connected with um, you know, your sixth and seventh chakras, so intuition running high. It's interesting because right before I pulled all this spread here, I said I was gonna add something to the card. I said, surrender to the divine. And so I think that as part of your daily practice for meditation, prayer, or healing, you could, first of all, of course, connect to Violet Flame Energy. I have an old video. There's some other videos on YouTube. You should check them out. Um, it's a good type of meditation to do. But you can also simply say that like before you go to sleep or when you wake up or whenever you're trying to meditate, 
Ask for the protection of the archangels, for God, for the highest energy in the universe. When you do this, you will be a-okay. People often ask, like, what if I open up and something bad comes through? It, it won't. Not if you put through protection like that. So say, um, you know, I, I call in a circle of light, I protect myself, and now I open up to God, to the angels, to the highest frequency available in the universe you'll be fine <laughs> because that that's basically saying that's the highest power okay just saying god or archangels are higher you're going to be fine but um, divinity wants to work through things this month and i want to connect this to the center card here because we have a card of death rebirth reincarnation judgment you'll notice you know and i don't talk about this often but there's people in the in every single judgment card you'll see sometimes a family um, or usually a man and a woman, and they're rising from the grave. Um, and so what this means is, for you this month, there is something that is already kind of at its natural end point. The necessary piece for you to do right now is to either grieve, release, um, acknowledge this, or somehow realize that this parting of the ways can be a peaceful one because judgment can either be harsh, like I judge you, um, or it can be, in this particular card, something where you release judgment and you, you leave with love. And that's what my guides are, they kind of whispered to me. If you can leave with love this month, it's going to be so much more powerful. Um, I was talking to a fellow intuitive about something that I'm writing in a book that um, hopefully one of these days I will release, but the message was that love, redemption, it's always so much more powerful than revenge. And I think that love, forgiveness, and release is also much more powerful than holding on, than fighting, than being angry. So some of you are at a natural end point this month, leave with love and embrace the new things that want to come through. Because this is clearing the slate for something better, something stronger, just like winter gives way to spring. And that's what I kind of see in uh, many of you and is this sort of new springtime. So 2020 is going to be the spring and allow that, uh, allow whatever needs to happen right now to be the clearing period so that the spring can be beautiful. Okay, let's go ahead now and look at what's crossing the center card. We have the 10 of cups because it's in the crossing position. It's neither high nor low energy. It's something that you can use to assist with this. So the 10 of cups is friend, family, community. And with your friends, family, and community, you're going to have love, you're going to have support. And what it's showing me is that basically you're not alone. And if you feel alone, then seek out that new friendship, that new family um, in the springtime of your life, which is next year. So um, you have some beautiful things coming through, but a release is necessary, uh, leaving with love and then allowing new people to come in or asking for the help. Because I feel like for some of you, you're so used to assisting other people or trying to practically assemble all of this stuff that uh, you're not just kind of, it's almost like you just need to fall back and allow people to give you a hug to let you be held up by them rather than you trying to hold together the, you know, be the glue for everything and everyone, okay? It's a beautiful symbology. I really like the first three cards that we've looked at. We have the divine, we have leaving with love, we have the sort of springtime energy coming through for you and then the 10 of cups. A lot of love, a lot of gentle um, rebirth energy coming through for you. Looking at the deep past, this is what's affecting you right now. This is your foundational card. We have the moon. She's upright. It's actually good when it's upright. It's a revelation card. Um, what you're going to be dealing with probably at the beginning of the month is any fears from the past that you haven't had a chance to sort of resolve. Um, but I like the moon because it's gentle, divine, feminine energy. So it is going to naturally reveal anything that is an illusion to you. You're going to be able to see through that veil of illusion. Your creativity is going to be heightened. Your fears should start to release because the card is in the upright position. And then you can start to allow this subtle, creative, intuitive, nurturing energy to flow through you this month. Um, it's a nocturnal card, so I do believe that for many of you, that's when your intuition and creativity will be at its height. So if you are um, someone who enjoys working as a night owl, you, you have encouragement to, to do that. If you normally like to get a good night's sleep, you may find that you're getting up earlier, you know, three or four in the morning. 
you can use that time period for meditation. And if you have a hard time going back to sleep, try to do something productive because the universe at that point of the, of the morning, actually, it's really a productive period. You're not going to have any of the, um, any of the sort of distractions that you normally would. Things are quieter and the energy is a lot more powerful. So nighttime is a great time to get stuff done. And I know that doesn't sort of work with our circadian rhythms, but if you're um, awakened during the night, go ahead and do something with it and, uh, and know that that's also a divine blessing and you'll be okay. You'll have enough energy to get through the next day. All right, looking now at recent past, I believe that many of you are getting to a period where you've done a lot of exploration, you've looked at all the different opportunities in front of you, and you're gonna narrow things down this month. This is a card here, the Seven of Cups of many options. And it's good to go there sometimes. I feel like for those of you that are deciding to let go of something, you're gonna spend the first part of the month sort of thinking, well, now what? Because if you've played the role of, for some of you, I think it's even like being a parent or a mentor. If you're very used to supporting somebody, when that person's ready to kind of like graduate and move on, um, either literally or symbolically, it leaves you now with this, a little bit of a gap in your life that you have to figure out, well, am I gonna help someone else or now am I gonna turn that lens towards myself and develop something else that I want to do? So I feel like some of you are doing a little bit of soul searching at the beginning of the month. And, uh, and I think that's okay. You'll eventually get to a point where you're ready to come out of that, um, the sort of dream state. But towards the beginning, allow yourself that chance and don't limit yourself. That's what I would say. When you do that sort of what if, um, allow yourself to what if anything, um, you know, changing, to, uh, possibly changing career, um, changing whatever, wherever you're living. Um, think of all the different possibilities in your life that you can explore and then allow your heart to be the uh, sort of compass that leads you in the right direction. In the crowning position here, we have the Eight of Swords. And with the Eight of Swords, it can sometimes be a self-imposed prison. And what I want you to do this month is to imagine that you are kind of breaking down some of those walls that you've built up. Uh, I'm actually hearing an old Sting song in my head. Uh, I think it was Fortress Around My Heart, something like that. I feel like some of you have built up this, uh, this wall, this protective gate to keep out the bad, but you're also not allowing some of the good to come through. Um, Ten of Cups can show brand new love in your life, and it can be a very committed love, like um, lifetime partner, lifetime friend, uh, and also just community that wants to kind of come in and support you right back. So if you have been a mentor or a healer, uh, this is a chance for others to come in and love you. I just get that energy of um, this warm embrace. So I feel like many of you need to open yourself up to receive love and abundance uh, and it will come through because otherwise, yes, when you cut people off and cut everything off, you're safe, but you're also alone. And I think that there is this sort of fear of of allowing love into your life. And I think as long as you connect to the divine energy that's coming through, you'll be able to discern whether it's uh, love that you can trust or if it's sort of ephemeral or passing or fleeting, uh, and that will help you out a little bit. Towards the midpoint of the month, when I look at near future, I see some of you faced with a decision or some decisions that feel a little bit like you're not sure which path to go on. We have the Two of Swords energy, which means that for some of you, it's it's almost self-imposed because when I'm looking at the card that preceded it, I feel like you're just afraid to kind of take the next leap of faith. So I think what I would encourage you to do is, again, stop kind of looking practically with your eyes can deceive you, but your heart, your third eye, your uh, seventh chakra, your connection to the divine, these things will not deceive you. So. Uh, if you have to make a decision, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and whatever first comes to you, you're going to know that that's the guidance from the divine. It's going to help you on that path. Uh, but with the Two of Swords, sometimes there's one other piece that I need to cover. There's not always going to be a win-win situation. You have to do what's best. Best for you, best with the given information, and uh, working within the deadlines of any sort of given situation. So make the best decision possible and then don't beat yourself up. 
You've already done all of this sort of brainstorming and what ifing. At this point, it's time to move and you have to make a decision at the midpoint of the month. That's also why judgment is there. So just trust in yourself and then you're gonna be able to make other decisions after that. Um, as we look at your ego, I, I actually trust that you are connected to something beautiful because we have the sun card here. So this is a connection to the divine. This is really good for those of you that are feeling like you need to uh, to pitch an idea or if you're attracted to someone and you want to ask them out. This card is showing charisma, uh, wider acceptance from the group, your own ability to again put your best foot forward. Some of you may also be trying to get pregnant. I've seen this in many many signs this month. We have in the past the moon card which can be about um, again kind of trying to have a baby and then we have the sun card which is a divine masculine card showing that that is coming through for many of you so don't give up I know that it might have been a tricky journey and you've been waiting but there's love coming through this can also be a young boy uh, for those of you thinking of adopting that is already in like already in the universe so uh, if, if you've been trying to get pregnant but haven't had success there but have been thinking about adoption I see a little baby boy that's already out there um, some of you may also be adding a small uh, pet to your life as well uh, so I just see an addition of a younger energy in your life whether it is a child a pet or someone that ha has a sort of playful energy that's coming in maybe a, a new friend but it's a very sort of juvenile energy too so they're young at heart if it's an adult and I think that might be nice for you because there's a lot of serious cards there's a lot of uh, again sort of cards of protection that came through prior to this uh, and I think that this person can help you come out of your shell a little bit. As we look at the environment, um, we have the Nine of Swords, and the Nine of Swords is reversed. This is good for you. Um, this is showing that any sort of feeling of being stressed out, of feeling like the, the, the sky was falling, or like Atlas, you're holding the world up uh, on your shoulders and back, you don't have to do that anymore. This is the release that needs to happen. Um, you know, the Nine of Swords is also connected to insomnia, and I feel like some of you, if you've been having nightmares, recurring dreams, or uh, your intuition is heightened during the evening, so you're receiving more, you can always meditate before you go to sleep, or when you wake up, or when that happens, and this is going to ease that sense of um, any sort of fear, doubt, or anxiety that you might have if you're waking up in the middle of the night. As I said, you probably have to resolve something, so when that happens, Take a deep breath, connect to the divine energy, and just kind of feel your way through whatever the messaging is. I feel like it's all there to assist. In the hope, spheres, and opportunity space, we have temperance. And what this is showing me is that you're going to be safe, you're gonna be protected, and it looks like the energy of the month is going to be subtle and gentle. So any sort of fear, anxiety, or challenges that you're kind of bringing into this month, um, you're going to be able to transmute them into something much more gentle. So basically release those feelings because I don't see them coming at you from the environment, uh, from, from other people. It feels like a lot of this is all about kindness and resolution because your ego is the sun. That's a very warm, loving, healing, charismatic energy. And uh, the judgment card was reversed, but that's all about release and new, new beginnings and a brand new start. And we have that also gentle energy of the moon. So I'm not worried. And the Ten of Cups, there's a lot of really beautiful energy this month. So I feel like you are going to have a little bit of stuff that you have to deal with at the beginning, but a lot of it's internal. And uh, your mantra this month is sort of rest, replenish surrender to divine, and then just allow for something newer and better to come through for you. As I look at the outcome, I have we have the Hierophant here, which is a card of a really great structure in your life. It's uh, sometimes associated with going back to school, uh, joining some sort of organization where there's a, a lot of hierarchy, a lot of structure to it. So some of you may be going to college or deciding to join a big company. Um, others of you might be deciding to embark a little bit more on a spiritual path because uh, the Pope is the sort of figure that we see here in the back and in some older decks that's actually what this card is called and uh, there's an absolute connection between divinity and the Hierophant. Now it doesn't have to be any sort of secular or traditional religion. What this could be is a decision for you to go down a path 
that is sort of guided by your heart, your intuition, uh, and by some sort of a spiritual journey. So uh, I'm looking at the book that the Hierophant is holding. Some of you may be deciding to immerse yourself in some sort of learning, higher learning, or you might be a writer, or you have a story to tell. There's something about the written and spoken word, despite this whole retrograde um, period that we're in, that is very, very good for you right now. So reading, writing, uh, talking about your story, listening to other people's stories, this is very powerful for you. And I think that you're going to be able to find some sort of a path, some sort of a sort of uh, community or tribe that is going to feel like, ah, finally, I'm home. It's safe. This is what I was looking for. So I'm excited for those of you that are deciding to go down that path. Um, it's interesting because normally uh, I'm looking at the light and dark here. It reminds me of what I would see on the high priestess card. Uh, and I feel like this is a month where finally you understand that intersection between all of the difficulty you might have experienced and all of the abundance that wants to come through. Shadow and light are coming together and you are feeling the sense of um, integration uh, and also I think for many of you clarity of what's next, the next path. So if you started the month sort of daydreaming and wondering what to do or if you felt like I have to leave this, I have to step away, once you release whatever it is you're releasing, there's a sense of newfound peace. Uh, there may be someone new that comes in your life to celebrate this with you. And then you have this feeling of purpose. And I really feel like that's what the Hierophant is bringing in for you. So stick with this month, however difficult it may be. I see you leaving it with a sense of purpose. Okay, let's move along now to the expanded forecast. The first card that we're going to look at is health, which is mind, body and spirit. On a very practical level, it's just encouraging you to avoid anything that your body has a hard time processing. And when I see allergens, it's not just sort of like seasonal allergies. This can also be things like caffeine, alcohol, nicotine um, that are kind of getting into your body and disrupting the energy. The other thing that I'm getting is, of course, toxic relationships or work situations. All of these things bring you out of your spiritual equilibrium and that sort of structured, safe energy that you've been trying to find. And I think some of it is going to involve just getting out of these other habits in your life that cause friction or bring you out of your spiritual high. And that's really what needs to happen here is there is divine spiritual energy that wants to come through to clear, to cleanse and to heighten your intuition and also heighten your frequency. If you've ever meditated, it's a euphoric experience. You don't really need things like caffeine when you go through a spiritual sort of buzz. And so I would say this month, I would really encourage you to um, enter into that world if you haven't before. Yoga is a really nice, subtle way to access that. Uh, but any sort of uh, singing mantra, uh, meditation, even like the singing bowls, if you need someone to guide you into it or you need a sound to kind of get you into that, I feel like suddenly you're going to be able to uh, plug into that frequency and you're not going to want, need, or even desire any of those uh, toxic things in the past that were kind of filling a void for you. Let's go ahead now and look at in concert both uh, wealth and love because they're connected. In wealth you have the fourth chakra aka the heart center. The card is reversed so there is a suggestion here to open your heart and then we have in wealth flow and what is he doing he's touching his heart center so how is this going to relate to you well right at the center when we saw that release card judgment re reversed there was the ten of cups on top of it friends family and community you already have this built-in network or a new network available to you if you let go of any of the sort of toxic connections from the past within this network i actually see a teacher a mentor or a coach and this is a very platonic energy they're not there to sort of seduce or, um, it's, or, or try to kind of like date you. This is to connect you to your path, to open your heart and to help you heal your heart. And for some of you, this could even be talking to a psychologist or a doctor. But I get this very supportive, very grounded, centered energy. And it's very calm too because we have the Hierophant, which is like the Pope, and then Temperance. This is a very, very platonic energy. So. Uh, you have a support team here this, this month that's coming in. Uh, when I look at the Ten of Cups and then connected to those two cards, this is sort of like 
thinking of when you were back in school before sort of you had that um, sexual awakening and you could just look at women, men, everybody as just friends. And I feel like you're going to find that group this month and you're not as focused on the sexual energy. It's more on the brotherhood and sisterhood of the people around you. And then you'll find one person in particular that can help you on that spiritual path. So I see mentor, teacher, coach, uh, energy kind of coming through and this is going to open you up and through the work that you're going to do with this platonic energy, you will find love, but you have to love yourself. You have to open your heart up. And again, I keep going back to that sting song about building a fortress around your heart this month. You're going to you're going to kind of chip away at that fortress, open up and be in the safety of friends, family, community or a mentor that can help you feel safe and, and open up and develop that muscle again. Um, not just the heart muscle, but like the muscle of love, because if we don't exist in that frequency, it is hard to get back into it. I feel like some of you may either be sort of dealing with that awakening after a period of sadness, abuse or being cut off. Uh, I'm you know, glancing at my dog here because two years ago, two and a half years ago, I adopted him and um, he came to me in sort of that broken state where he had been abused, he had been neglected, he had been out on the streets and had been passed around to foster homes and hospitals and all of this stuff. And it took, it took a couple of years for me to help heal him. And now he's at the point where that trust is back and he's this little <laughs> beautiful spirit that always existed but needed the nurturing. So there may be someone in your life, you may choose to bring in a baby um, or uh, adopt something or someone. So it could be a pet, it could be a child, it could also be a cause, but there's something that you want to do that is going to require a little bit of an investment of love and energy. It'll come back to you, but be patient with it. And that's what I see with temperance and the Hierophant. Consistency, structure, patience, healing takes place with that. You'll melt into that. Um, and so whether it's you that needs the healing and you're going to seek that out, that support that uh, like I gave to my dog and he opened up, you can find that. Or if you want to give that to someone, that's great. You're going to see it. But I want to remind you of the time. It takes time to reverse some of that um, cutting off that happened. So some of you may choose to kind of embark on a healing path. And this is why I'm seeing an overlap between uh, wealth and love. Do something you love. You'll be very productive at that and also profitable with that. But guess what? We didn't get any pentacles this month. So the focus isn't as much on time, energy, and resources. It's more on what brings you passion, what brings you joy. The absence of something, though, is something in and of itself. So one thing I want you to make sure that you do this month is to value your time and energy. So if you are a healer, make sure that you're healing yourself, that you're resting, and that you're also uh, having enough resources in your life. So if you're working for a hospital or a practice and you're not being appreciated, that's something you want to look at. So that's me kind of going beneath the veil a little bit, making sure that you're taking care of yourself. Cause that, you know, again, sometimes if there's an absence of one of the elements and I'm looking at it here for you, I think just make sure that your time, energy and money are where they need to be. One thing I just remembered that you were probably wanting to know is if you're single and looking this month, I do see that there is new love or a new energy coming in. It could be in the form of though, sort of like an unconditional love relationship like a child or a pet. Um, if you meet someone, I will say this, there is a sort of contradictory energy that comes through. They could be young with an old soul or they could be an older person that has a very playful energy. Uh, so there's someone that is unconventional and you're drawn to that energy for those of you that are single and looking. For those of you in a relationship, um, yeah, judgment in the center is showing that it's time to kind of evaluate how much of a compatibility you have with that person, knowing that if you decide to stay, you may need support. If you decide to leave, there's a lot of friendship and I would say fraternal or platonic energy that's coming through that just wants to support you. Uh, I'm not really seeing that many of you are going to go deep into a new relationship this month. It's a very easy energy that is presenting itself. If you are in a relationship, though, it does feel like you might benefit from a teacher or a mentor as well. So counseling comes through for those of you that are already partnered. If you're single and happy, perfect. Most of the energy this month is about work within rather than work working in relationships around you. So that introspective work is really what's important. We didn't get the hermit, but the whole energy of this month feels very much like a hermit energy. Again, I, I see some of you breaking out of that towards the end, but 
Uh, but because there's so much introspective work, it's hard to see other people in the space as much this month. One other thing that I want to do is just look specifically at work since there was overlap here. Again, I feel like some of you are stepping out of a job or you're dealing with some changes that have been delivered from the powers that be. Uh, you know, judgment or uh, sometimes I would say it's usually the tower reverse can show restructuring. With judgment reversed, there wasn't as much sort of prior knowledge and I don't think that maybe it's as easy for people to deal with it. So it could have been that, you know, a really high up figure left, an owner, a CEO, um, a really visible person and someone new came in and it's sort of hard to figure out, do you like this person or do you not? I actually kind of like the overall energy I think that they're trying to accomplish. So give them time if that's the case. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of transparency when I'm looking at the environment, the work environment for many of you. I don't love Nine of Swords. It can be stressful. So I think what you want to do is to really embrace the energy of temperance and the Hierophant, which is to stay calm, to stay cool, and to know that, um, you know, if you can find a little place of Zen this month and just kind of exist there, that's going to be better. But, you know, when we look at your health card, if it doesn't feel good, it's probably time to move on. The, you know, avoiding allergens is really about avoiding toxicity, toxicity in relationships and also in work environments. So if that environment doesn't feel good for you and I don't like the nine of swords, then I think it's probably time to move on or to find a way to have a healthier environment. All right. Finally, your destiny card. It's all about connections, conscious connections. So this is what I was kind of talking about as we were looking at love. It's not so much about sexual or sensual connections this month. Um, it's more about are you happy with who is in your life and how they're functioning as friend, as mentor, as teacher, as boss, etc.? Take a look at all of those roles. Be very, very picky and very, very decisive as to, you know, is this the right place for me? Is this the right person in my energy? Because every time you interact with someone, you get a little bit of an imprint or a little bit of a cord or a connection with them. So the more you have that person's energy in your uh, auric field, the more you either kind of like adopt some of their frequency or um, allow them to kind of take energy from you. So it needs to be reciprocal. You need to be gaining some sort of a, an energetic boost from this person. It's always better to surround yourself with people that are smarter, more experienced on an energy level. They're higher because what it's going to do is constantly bring you up a little bit. If you're surrounding yourself with people that are in the low frequencies, then you have nowhere to go but down. So you want to go to equal or greater than to kind of pull back mathematics, which I'm not a big uh, lover of, but I see the symbol equal or greater than. That's what you're going to use as your sort of um, test with each person in your life. Are they at least on the same level? Perfect. Are they uh, greater than me? Awesome. Are they less than? Well, let's look at this. Is it somewhat, it's in the case of a child, a dog, or someone that you're trying to heal? That's okay. That's a, that's a very specific choice that you're going to do. You're going to heal, but you are going to receive from that because there's this feeling of uh, making it a better place and making someone sort of see all of the love they can experience as well. So choose carefully when you go less than. Um, it has to be something that you really are passionate about. So yeah, conscious connections and con conscious choices with how you decide to give and receive energy, okay? Let's go ahead and review everything we talked about and I'll leave you with a closing word. Your channeled message this month was to rest, replenish yourself and surrender to divine energy. And we saw that divinity here in your catalyst card. A little bit of violet flame energy, a lot of uh, sixth and seventh chakra, basically your third eye and the crown. This is where the awakening is gonna happen for many of you this month. And that connection to divinity is really kind of um, intersecting with all the cards beneath us. So know that you're being guided to a path of greater awakening, greater personal strength, greater intuition. Judgment reversed. Leave with love. Leave peacefully. Allow for the changes that need to happen to happen. And that's part of that surrendering to things that you can't control. Whether it's work, life, love, or loss, just know that there's a blessing on top of that. The Ten of Cups is love and it's connected to friends, family, and community. So you have help there, you have support, or you have the ability to make these new connections. So embrace that because it wants to embrace you as well. Deep past showing a, a deepening of intuition with the moon card, also a gentle energy that's gonna touch everything as well. And I think it's divine feminine energy that's really coming through here. Energy of the mother, energy of mother earth, 
energy of uh, like Mother Mary, I just get this beautiful nurturing energy that wants to support you and awaken you this month. So allow that to happen. Um, also, we talked about for some of you, I do see insomnia or early hours of the morning being a powerful time for you. So rather than getting stressed out with that, take advantage of that if it comes through. You're going to have some soul searching to do at the beginning of the month. I think that this is going to function in a very sort of helpful way. Uh, and I think there's nothing wrong with that. There is a point, though, uh, during which you're going to have to just take a leap of faith, which is what we see with the Two of Swords. So uh, explore, experiment, and then know that eventually you're going to have to make the best decision possible. Um, Eight of Swords is a self-created prison often. It's like painting yourself into a corner. So I would say just paint yourself out of that corner. <laughs> And also be very transparent, be very inquisitive, ask questions if you need to. Uh, and then I mentioned that song that kept coming to mind. I, would, I want you to kind of open up your heart space. We saw that it's not only affecting your relationships, but also your business. So you have to let people in and trust that you're going to be able to decide who's worth it and who's not. We already talked about the Two of Swords. The best way to kind of overcome that is just to move. You you're move into the one direction or another, you're going to be fine. We have... Um, a symbol of Athena here in the top space, which is telling me your wisdom and also your intuition will lead you on the right path. The Sun card here in Ego is showing that you have a lot of charisma this month and you have a great connection to spiritual energy. Use that to your advantage. There's also, as I said, this sort of contradictory energy of a young spirit with an old soul or an older person with a younger spirit. Um, so that's also mentorship. Uh, it's almost like the definition of that. There's going to be some sort of an exchange this month of older and younger energy. And um, it comes through as a teaching force. So if that happens this month, if you meet a mentor, if you want to be a mentor, it seems like it's a good use of your time and your energy. Uh, within the environment, Nine of Swords, it's time to leave toxic situations. You want to take care of yourself. If you are having insomnia, take a look at what you're doing. You know, we saw here in health to avoid allergens. That could be caffeine, you know, if you're just not feeling like you're able to rest. Look at, look at your uh, sleeping environment, look at your working environment, and find ways to be healthier and happier this month. It's going to be important. Uh, and then the, the month is really gentle as you look at temperance and hopes and fears and the hierophant and the outcome. This is very, very subtle, very, very gentle, and it's a much calmer version of what we saw with the moon. So I feel like healing and resting and relaxation is going to be important and now I really understand the rest and replenish because the month sort of exits in a softer way for many of you. Expanding the forecast, take care of yourself, mind, body and spirit, avoid any toxicity in the environment, in food uh, and also just in the air that you breathe. All of the above is important for health. For wealth and love there's an interconnectedness between having an open heart and then having a flow of new love, new opportunities in your life. Most of what we see here is very platonic, uh, and so I think that's okay. I'm not seeing like uh, the lover of your dreams coming in. That doesn't mean it won't happen, but it means that the primary message that I'm giving here in the general is to take care of yourself, to do something that you love, to surround yourself with people that you love, and that's going to deepen any relationships that you have or anyone that comes into your life. Conscious Connection sums up everything that I just said really nicely, which is make smart choices. Um, and this is, again, all the energy I see is either like brotherly or sisterly. There's a lot of kindness, friendliness, and, um, and again, sort of, it's, it comes through as best friend energy. So you may end up meeting someone that's like that. And I think that would make a lot more sense, too, with what I'm seeing with the old soul, but youthful or youthful, but wise. So um, you may be meeting someone that kind of defies your normal expectations, but brings with them this great sort of energy that I think can help you break down the walls. This brings your monthly reading to a close. I hope that you got all the guidance that you needed to travel through this month with a sense of uh, feeling like you're in control, that you know what's coming through, and uh, really allowing for that personal growth and healing to happen, which was a key component of this month. If you ever feel like you want to talk a little bit more about something that I discussed here in this general reading, or if there's something specific going on in your life and you need more advice, feel free to reach out to me. You can click on the first card in the video or the first link below it. This will connect you to my booking site where you can check out rates and availability. So if that makes sense for you, then I look forward to talking to you soon. Otherwise, uh, another way that you can support this channel is through becoming a patron. I mentioned earlier that everything that you see here is a direct result of other people's love, support, and contributions. So if you would like to uh, give a one-time contribution or a continuing one, you can click on that second card, second link, 
and it will uh, take you to a page on my site where you can look at a lot of different options. Uh, PayPal is one of them, uh, Patreon, and also just clicking the join button here. But all of that is detailed on my patron page, and I just want to say thank you in advance. If you're thinking of doing it, and if you've already done it, then I dedicate today's reading to you. You made everything possible, so much appreciation. Another way that you can show support is by joining me on social media. Clicking on the third card and the third link will take you to a page on my site that can uh, basically provide all the links so it's just one click at a time and it's super easy. Also, if you haven't already liked and subscribed, please do that as well. Once you've joined me on social media, if you feel inclined to share, I want to go ahead and encourage you to do that. Uh, every time you share something on your feed, it helps me with a couple of my planetary goals, which is to create great conversations around spirituality, to give people the tools that they need to become better people, and to shine some light on this planet and hopefully help pass on the torch. That's why I show up and I just want to say that uh, I appreciate you, I appreciate your support in that endeavor as well. I want to leave you now with a closing word, which is that everything that's going on this month is divinely guided, including the retrograde period, which might drive you a little bit crazy, but we have divinity as your uh, catalyst card, which means everything is connected to that. So whatever you're letting go of or being asked to reevaluate, it's flowing through that. The friends, family, and community that wants to connect with you, there's something higher in that sort of connection. Again, this month it's not about a sexual sort of union, though that may exist for many of you. It's more about finding a brotherly, sisterly, or even a mentorship type uh, situation, which we saw with the Hierophant, which we saw with Temperance and which we also see with the sun. Whoever you're meeting this month uh, with respect to that kind of energy, it's going to be a very grounding force for you. Uh, and if you decide to do a little bit more of solitary work this month, reading, writing, and kind of telling your story is going to be important. So find a way to channel that into something that hopefully other people can enjoy as well. I'd like to close everything with just a note of gratitude. Um, you have a lot of choices here on YouTube and also in life. So I appreciate the time that you spent with me. I hope you found a great use in this, and I just want to say have a fantastic November, and I'll see you again real soon. Take care.